Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. And we really want to thank all those that support the Nutramedical Show by purchasing all their nutraceutical wellness needs at Nutramedical.com. They need to know that we have the very best on earth. We also have free wellness consultations for those who are our recent customers by phone. And anybody who isn't a customer, you can email and we'll give you advice on which nutraceuticals to take. Uh, and I do not believe that any chronic illness or prevention should be done with anything other than Nutramed's. Nutrimeds, by the way, are more advanced than any other nutraceutical company. I search around the world and need a custom design and more private label from the top doctors on the planet. And we obtain uh, nutraceuticals from Switzerland, from Japan, from around the world, and we, uh, we put them together in very elegant protocols that you cannot compare to anywhere else. So you're going to get free advice. Uh, you're going to get the best quality nutraceuticals, and you're going to get support and also networking with other clinics around the world whether you're trying to treat cancer, reverse heart disease or peripheral vascular disease, reverse autoimmune conditions, or just to extend your life and improve your performance, protect yourself from Fukushima. Now, joining us this first uh, uh, part of the show, we have Chris Harris, our nuclear expert. That's his radio name. And Chris, of course, has a major uh, bunch of papers to talk about today. He wasn't on last week. Uh, it wasn't really a lot of news, but when I saw your reports this morning, Chris, I thought, we got to get you on air. Uh, tell us what's the latest in terms of what's been happening with Fukushima and the nuclear update that came from the Nuclear Regulatory Commission. Okay, well, tomorrow there'll be, uh, I sent you a lot of information, so um, oh, yeah. I'm going to take it the way I think it is that there'll be an announcement that tomorrow there'll be a, a meeting, a public meeting, where people can uh, listen on a webcast or, uh, or phone in and, get, a, and get, a, get to listen in where the industry will talk about the new requirements for U.S. nuclear power plants, to um, so that they could adopt them and to uh, ensure that they're safe uh, against a uh, Fukushima-like event here in well, the United States, and it's possible to have them, especially with new seismic. The seismic requirements need to be re-looked at. We, we did talk about that on, on the, the last show I was on. Yeah, no, and, exactly. Uh, since they came out with a new report, the things things have to be considered now, like what the effects of a dam that you might have upstream and downstream yeah, you uh, mentioned on, that, a, uh, on a river. And uh, seismic that. activity where we had thought uh, was previously uh, a dam would be well constructed uh, may have to be looked at again in, in that in that lie. What are the effects on a uh, on a nuclear plant, and including other other events too? Now, so I want you to go and roll back and uh, slow this one down a bit. Downstream, if you lose your water, you can't cool the plants. So you lose your ability, your heat sink. And upstream, you can flood the uh, thing, including the diesel generator, so you lose your backup power, and then your plant goes nuclear. We've also identified that there's a basic defect in not only Mark 1 reactors, but there's other additional ways that nuclear material can go critical. That was demonstrated by Fukushima in terms of um, plant one, two, three, and a cooling pool. And cooling pool number three, which actually had a, a hydrogen-based uh, nuclear explosion because it was very touchy being a plutonium uh, MOX fuel reactor cooling pool. We've identified that uh, reactivity can occur because of uh, multiple different causes can cause a nuclear type of event or hydrogen explosion. Uh, We've had, uh, we're going to bring on the program actually in the next few weeks, Ernie Gunderson, which you highlighted over the issue of can they get these fuel rods out. Ian Enu has picked up your report on the September 14th show that talked about the predicting of falling debris. Can you tell us about that? Because this is important. You predicted this, that falling debris was going to make it very difficult to get the debris out of cooling pool four. They removed two out of, I think, 134 fuel rod assemblies. Only the newest ones, which are not highly radioactive, the old ones, which are bent, twisted with concrete chunks the size of your thumb or bigger. And now there's a large object, seven meter long, 470 kilogram uh, steel beam that fell into the uh, concrete basin used for storage of spent fuel rods. They don't have anything under control here. And the fact is they're not coming clean on the fact that they can't control criticality. They're pumping in nitrogen to cool off the reaction. Uh, but it, often if they put too much, it flushes radioisotopes so they get a, a release of radiation into the air and water. And on the other hand, if they don't pump enough in, they get critical, they get incredibly increased hydrogen explosion because of the zirconite interaction with water and radioisotopes that causes production of, of hydrogen. Uh, and you can get a hydrogen-based explosion. So both of these are extremely dangerous. The situation in, there also in Japan is that we're now seeing the magma chamber of Mount Fuji fill, and every couple hundred years this blows and covers an area radially 200 miles. The cheaper reactors and up to, I think, over 80-some reactors in the area 
are in danger of being affected by the Mount Fuji explosion, and there's a direct fault line from Fuji right through Sendai to Fukushima. So the Japanese by no means have this under control. They're actually talking about, quote, backing off nuclear power by 2030. There won't be a Japan in 2030 at the rate things are going. Japan will, will be a, 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 an exclamation mark in the history books at the rate that they're going. Yep. And, well, it, that, of course, is possible because we don't know what's going to happen. 2030, I mean, that, that's a long ways out, and it's likely that there'll be another seismic event or if, or if Mount uh, Fuji. Well, uh, just a few uh, months ago, they did a, they, they did a war game with the United States to actually evacuate the population of Greater Tokyo, which is 45 million. It's the largest metropolitan, greater metropolitan area on the planet, larger than Mexico City or Sao Paulo, Brazil. So the fact is, if there's a major radiation release, they're not going to get those people out. They're going to. They're already being salted slowly with radiation. We're seeing defects in insects and in uh, plants, not only in Japan but across North America. And Christina Consolo is usually on every Friday to talk about that. Mm-hmm. But yep. uh, let's go over these things here. You had this other incident. Okay. What happened in this incident where this seven meter long uh, object fell into the Fukushima Daiichi reactor cooling pool? Well, cool. consider that if you've got a giant pile of rubble and uh, you don't know where, what's holding which steel girder up, and then you try to carefully pick it apart like surgery. You're trying to pick apart and, and lift this beam, and you're trying to lift that beam, and then uh, you realize that you're lifting this beam, but there's nothing else holding up the other beam. So everything, you've, you've all played the game, perhaps Jenga. I liken it to that. Oh, yeah, yeah. The, the kids game of Jenga where you pull one thing and the whole thing falls down. You're trying to do Jenga where it doesn't fall down. That's right, and you know, in Jenga, of course, the parlor game, and everybody has a good laugh at it when you collapse the the, the tower. But here, the, the stakes are a little higher. And what happens is, well, I'm, I was just estimated the beam, uh, from my knowledge of uh, of, stru- uh, of structural engineering and such, the uh, that beam was probably around the area of 30 pounds per foot, and then it was like a 25 foot beam. You know, we're talking hundreds, we're talking over a thousand pounds of uh, weight going down. It almost looked like it plunged in. And this video is posted on your website. Uh, if you look at it, it looks like it was plunged down um, end, end first. So whatever's underneath it has gotten, you know, several hundred pounds at plus, you know, plus 30 feet, because that's how deep it is, uh, of travel. It's picking up speed as it's going down the water. It doesn't float. It's not. It's, it's a steel beam. And it now it impinged on whatever it impinged on down below. And if it didn't, if it right. didn't hit a fuel, if it didn't hit the fuel racks with with the assemblies, I might be very surprised. And if it didn't hit that, it certainly hit the floor, and it could have punctured the floor. Now, my other thing too, this video did show that it caught it caught it, and uh, everybody was going, "Oh my God, look at that!" But I am certain that this has been happening all along. It's just, they just happened to have caught this one on on uh, on video. On video. Yeah. Now, yeah. uh, you, you also have sent us a link, which we're going to post up, of uh, the NRC is going to have this literally webcast. That'll be tomorrow. And you've even given the phone number and the passcode. This is implementing uh, near-term task force recommendation 2.1 flooding hazard reevaluations re- uh, related to Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. This is for America now. The fact is we have extreme weather that they haven't compensated for, uh, station blackouts, these new uh, possible breakdowns in plant uh, integrity in terms of containment, and the danger now of the new uh, earthquake zone uh, maps that have come out that indicated that up to 75% of our nuclear reactors are within the strike zone of an earthquake. Uh, this is not good news. And, I, uh, and you, you mentioned a comment by the new director after Jasco was fired because he set up tough rules. Uh, mention her name and what she actually said about Fukushima and the openness of TEPCO. Uh, Allison McFarlane did uh, did commend in in this one. Uh, I'd send you that information uh, of the openness of Japan and you know the transparency of the words. And I I thought I I looked at that and said, wait a minute, you're talking about the same group of people, the ones yeah, that we're right. still not being able to get four, uh, you know, four years out of. We just got a release just uh, several weeks, or just a couple of weeks ago. It must be in a parallel dimension. Street. Yeah, parallel yeah, dimension. Right. It's not not in this reality. It's in a different one, but. She's talking about a parallel dimension where TEPCO is actually doing what they should do in collaboration with other nations to stop this disaster. Back in a moment with Chris Harris. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report. We're going to be joined at the bottom of the hour with Alexander Bachman, and uh, we're going to kind of work this together. Um, 
Chris, the, uh, if we were to actually just do some wargaming in our mind, and we're gonna, at the bottom of the hour we're going to show some evidence that the powers that be are, are maneuvering things into place. Uh, I happen to know from intelligence sources for years that the Long Beach, California plant, which is given to the People's Republican Army, uh, which is uh, Hutchins and Wampoa, which manages all of the ports in Mexico 100%, that the Mexican government doesn't do any management and they, or determination what comes and doesn't come, whether it's military supplies, hardware, etc. Now, before the... Uh, invasion of Norway and so on by the, the Nazis. They actually pre-placed equipment and then they let her send their troops in under aliases. The fact is that the Chinese have been shipping for probably 20-25 years all kinds of equipment to Long Beach, California and into Mexico. Now, I know this from my intelligence sources that there's a number of uh, priorities of targets if you want to hit them with a missile, mortar or whatever. Number one is to hit nuclear plants. Number two is to hit dams. Number three is to hit main power grid lines. And then four is to actually hit military bases if they can. The, the fact is the very top priority of, a, of an attack, uh, either by a missile attack or a mortar attack, is to hit nuclear bases. And uh, these nuclear power plants are sitting ducks. A lot of them have up to 50 years or more of fuel on board. They haven't uh, opened Yucca Mountain or another facility to move this debris off safely. They haven't designed rail cars to safely move it because you don't want to put this on the highway, either liquid radioactive waste or solid waste, because if those things tip or roll and you lose containment, you could literally despoil an entire area. We had an incident where I personally was involved with uh, uh, a liquid radioactive waste uh, uh, tanker van that actually went off the uh, I-70 freeway and we had used cables that took us almost a week to pull it off so it didn't land in the Colorado River and despoil the entire southwestern United States with enough plutonium to kill everyone many thousands of times over. So when people say these things don't happen, I'm sorry uh, but for a bunch of angels protecting us, a whole lot of stuff has happened and very few people really know what's going on. They're also moving this stuff in highways down to a storage depot and a salt mine near Dallas, Texas, uh, including our, new, our chemical weapons that are moved to a, a base in Utah where they burn a lot of their chemically at high temperature, these uh, very advanced weapon systems, uh, and then a lot of the toxins are stored uh, in salt mines uh, as well. So. How do you answer that? I mean, we have extreme weather now. In the last few years, we've had tornadoes ripping through uh, switchyards. We've had earthquakes. We have this latest report you were talked about a few weeks ago. We have debris falling into, into this open pit. And we've given them recommendations, but they don't do anything. In fact, I've contacted Senator Wyden and Senator Feinstein. I gave my article, which is now going to be published by the Academy of Environmental Medicine, to the Academy, to Dr. William Ray, Dr. Willoughby. Uh, and <clears throat> they, they received it and say, well, this is great. We now have information. It is the biggest environmental disaster in history. And on top of that, we're actually on the edge of a possible war where a preemptive uh, nuclear attack could occur against the Bushehr reactor. It'll be a nuclear war, even if it's local. That radiation from Bushehr could be literally hundreds of times more immediate radiation pulse than came from Chernobyl. Uh, added to the constant open wound of Fukushima and the danger that our nuclear reactors here are not at all safe. A lot of them are aging. They haven't been upgrading technology. We've now realized that some of the technology, like the Mark I reactors, basically are dangerous. The, uh, the uh, wet well and the cooling pool and the hydrogen containment and all these other factors that you've talked about. And now, of course, we have this falling debris, which they can't control uh, to stop this. Nobody's put a air containment with spider silk uh, Kevlar tents over it because you can't put a sarcophagus of concrete. No one's built a corium catcher underneath the reactor. No one's built a seawall in the containment area to convert liquid to solid radioactive waste. So the dumping, as of a month ago, they had the 61st major release of radiation purposeful by TEPCO and the Japanese managers of the GE reactors. Uh, this is nuts. And we have no response. I can't get any response from these damn senators. They're aggravating me. It's like, excuse me, all I've been doing is asking good questions. My article has been accepted by the Academy. How come I can't get a response from our so-called representatives? Why do we not get a response? Well, you know, that, that's a hard question to, uh, to answer. Why we, they, they, they owe you a response, but they owe us a response for certain. And uh, Well, the thing is, somebody like me would, uh, somebody like me actually, uh, uh, when I came back after I did a little tour with the Prophecy Club we were under Reserve Admiral John Hughes, uh, I went away for, uh, I think it was about a week. 
uh, two weeks. I went away for two weeks. I took my vacation, went away with the Prophecy Club. I came back and I got fired. And they realized that I knew about what was going on at Rocky Flats because they had liquid radioactive waste that was heading toward the North Platte River. And it's still on its way, by the way. It's crawling across the, uh, the uh, interface between the clay and the granite underby burden uh, toward the North Platte River because they don't have containment of Rocky Flats nuclear radioactive plutonium lace waste. Now, the problem is if you're a whistleblower like me and you've actually been involved in court, most of the time you either end up dead or fired or you die of the stress of trying to deal with these maniacs because they're ruthless. Well, guess what? I'm fearless but not careless. And the problem is that I'm not going to give up on trying to get the truth out about the fact that we have dangerous nuclear reactor policies in America. And if you want to have nuclear in your future, you need to unveil technology like nuclear fusion uh, technology, tokamak reactors. We need to talk about pebble bed reactors. By the way, Ernie Gunderson's staff feels that thorium reactors are extremely dangerous. They're not safe either. All of these old nuclear plants need to be upgraded if we want to use them at all. Uh, and it's going to cost a lot of money. None of these plants, by the way, operate in, 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 the, in, the, uh, in the blue. They always operate in the red. Uh, and we have to understand what what the future is. If we keep killing the uh, the uh, the ocean uh, benthic layer that, that supplies the world's oxygen, if we keep on plowing down the forests in Brazil and elsewhere around the world that generate the world's oxygen, the oxygen carbon cycle gets choked off. And if we're heading into an ice age, which is going to cover a good part of the northern latitudes with snow and ice, you're not going to have as much ability to convert the CO2 that we're generating or volcanoes are generating, which is increasing, back into oxygen. So oxygen concentrations worldwide will drop. Ozone layers will thin along with a magnetic field decrease. And we're going to end up with a massive die-off of the plants on Earth caused by these interactive factors. And no one's talking about this. No one's talking about the fact that we're heading into a climate change that's going to be an extinction-level event. And yet, <clears throat> nuclear could be part of our future if it was done safely, but it's not. It's not being done safely at all, and it's very dangerous. And all the nuclear plants, as they are now, they just want to whitewash it. McFarland saying, TEPCO's doing a good job. Sorry, to me, that's a form of criminal, a criminal abuse of the public. In fact, I think well, there needs to be a new type of, of, of criminal activity where you have a public official or a government or a corporate official that says something like this that puts the public in danger. They need to go to jail. Well, let, let me make you angry. <laughs> McFarland did say, uh, I think it was last week or the week before, in Vienna, addressing the IAEA, that um, other other nations need to protect their whistleblowers like ours are here. And I don't see that whistleblowers in this country are protected. They're not protected at all. I talked to a, my, one of my neighbors who actually got fired, who was a, one of the senior engineers at, at the San Onofre reactor 12 miles away. Uh, he was uh, fired because he was uh, a whistleblower, and there were all kinds of whistleblowers that got fired. There were so many people inside the plant that were trying to whistleblow, and they would get fired or put in dangerous positions. You know, it's and, it's, and it's also within the NRC too. There are whistleblowers, and they're getting treated very poorly. Right, exactly. Yeah. This needs to stop. This needs to stop right now because. If we get into some kind of a shooting war, number one, our nuclear plants are target number one, and we don't have even the nuclear waste moved off the plant. How crazy. Back in, back in a moment. Welcome back to the Nutramedical Report, and uh, we're going to have uh, a, a update from Alexander Bachman. Alexander, I think you're on uh, the John Moore Show today uh, on Republic Radio, which is 7 to 9 a.m. Central Time, Monday to Friday. And uh, there's some important issues that need to be opened up. Now, uh, I'm going to just go back to 1999, April, uh, newsletter for the Prophecy Club, and I gave them a specific prophetic vision warning that we were going to have a invitation by the president to have foreign troops on American soil in case there's, quote, disruption of the normal, uh, if you want to call it, civil society. In other words, martial law. Now, people think that can't happen. I'm sorry it can't. And it doesn't have to happen with millions of troops. It can happen with a couple hundred thousand troops if they're properly placed. The fact is that Obama is a globalist. Obama is an apologist for the 
uh, for uh, Sunni Islam. He is uh, totally a bankster boy. Uh, he is collaborating with the globalizing America and turning into a socialist, uh, literally dependent uh, police state. He wants to take over the Internet. He wants to. He's collaborating with the FBI move to actually get the backdoor passwords to everybody's cell phone so he can know your GPS coordinates. Now, why would the FBI want to know everyone, not just some people, but everybody's backdoor passwords so they can get access to their GPS coordinates? This is nuts. And when people say, well, you're just a conspiracy theorist, I'm saying, no, we're conspiracy researchers. Now, Alexander, you live in Mexico. You live in, in I'm not going to say where you live, but you live in Mexico. You've been doing a lot of research over the period of time. I'm just going to recount a few facts. Hutchinson Wampoa, which is an arm, 100% arm of the People's Republican Army, controls every port, uh, including Via Cardenas, the giant super port on the Pacific side of southern Mexico. It's connected to the so-called Trans-Texas Corridor and all these other giant corridors that haven't gone away, including the lying piece of garbage governor of Texas who tries to pretend that it hasn't has gone away when they dismantled the names of the pieces, but it's still being assembled inside the United States. Uh, one of those terminuses of the port is, believe it or not, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, What's going on is material are coming into the United States to arm gangs to the teeth through the Long Beach, California port. I've known about this for 20 years. We've got tons of collaboration on that. All these super port and super highways, 100 series highways in Mexico, are completely built for and paid by the Chinese. The Chinese have, on the Guatemalan Mexican border, short range, medium intermediate range nuclear missiles aimed at America. We have Russian movements working in Venezuela as well as Chinese. They're getting ready. They're getting ready for something. And, of course, on the other side, they're not really aware of just how stupid they are because between Taiwan, South Korea, and Japan, and this big uh, discovery of the MOX reactor fuel pool and the other issues in Fukushima, they've had a nuclear weapons development program there for decades in Japan. Japan should not be counted out as a nuclear power. Uh, Russia and China will be nuked flatter than a pancake in under 25 minutes. The fact is that even the hatred against the Japanese for the invasion of Manchuria 81 years ago that was celebrated a week ago was, was protests in China. Uh, the Chinese want to invade Australia and New Zealand. They want to invade North America. They do not have the logistics of the Blue uh, Water Navy. They're probably moving tons of troops. In fact, I think John has worked out some logistics. Uh, there are some prophetic visions by a number of Christians over the years, including Henry Groover and many others that have actually made statements, all of them very similar, which you have to take notice when they're very similar. Um, and people should be aware, you know, just like the emperor of China, Japan said, that, you know, if you invade America, there will be a, a, a gun behind every blade. Yeah, there'll be a lot of dead Americans, but anybody trying to invade America you better have all of the armies on earth because you're not going to make it. It'll be like throwing raw meat into a meat grinder. Uh, and I don't think they care. I think the Chinese think that, well, if we pour in a million troops, we'll pour in a million more. You've got to get them across the Pacific Ocean, and uh, you've got to get them across borders. Um, you know, the, the jockeying is now to have an exchangeable yuan and for China to become the prescient economic and, and, and military power on earth. And those growing pains are going to cause major conflict that they really don't have the land resources to support their population food-wise. There's a massive famine in China. That's why they're building food resources in other countries, like in growing rice in northern uh, Australia for the Chinese market. People don't conceive what's going on on a worldwide basis, do they, uh, Alexander? So give us the latest report you presented this morning and where this is all going. Well, thank you, Dr. Deagle. The, the New World Order plan is for communist China to take over the world. That's the way they're pushing it. That's the, that's the thing they, they want. That's their new want model. They, they want, that's their model for the global control. A small number of the clique at the top, and everybody else is basically a, a farm, if you want to call it, in the, uh, as a resource. But it's going to collapse in their face because the world is waking up, and China is not a uh, petroleum-based country, so I don't think it'll work unless you move uh, China to mainland uh, USA. And that's what they're pushing for. But believe me when I tell you this, I mean, when we, when we published the article about, you know, the Chinese ports in Mexico uh, being controlled uh, the, uh, by the Chinese 
all the main ports in Mexico, including Ensenada, Baja California, Lázaro Cárdenas, Colima, and Veracruz, being controlled by the Chinese, we were we were exposing something that was already being exposed by World Net Daily, by Jerry Corsi, and other people like Alex Jones. But we are pointing to the fact that they they've been installing sensors along our highways. <clears throat> Uh, the Chinese have invested a great amount of money, as you stated, into these highway systems. Well, just and by the way, these highways, are, these highways are designed to take tanks. They're not just designed to take heavy, heavy truck traffic. They're designed to take heavy tanks. And they're also designed, to actually, lay with lengths of them to be actually allow, able to be used as airports to land heavy aircraft as well. They're not designed just to deal with heavy traffic. These are way over-designed. Yeah, these are pre-collated concrete designs, so that means they can take tons and tons and tons and take the beating and keep on ticking. And, right. you know, they've, they've been planning this for a while. And uh, the, the thing that really got me is when I got confirmation from this report that was published in a forum on the Internet over there at uh, uh, God, uh, what is it? Godlike Productions. Godlike Productions, thank you, where they yeah. mention that uh, this family member of this Australian uh, citizen, that his brother works at the Defense Signals Directorate over there at Pine Gap, and we know Pine Gap is behind the Echelon system with the UK and the US in uh, scanning and recording all satellite telephone transmissions around the world. But the thing that got me is that they got to talking about the Chinese bases in Mexico. And this guy spilled the entire operation. There's at least 12, 12 Chinese bases in northern Mexico right now. They're not right. manned to the teeth, but they are operating, and they are bringing in armored vehicles, and they are supplying these bases in case of a, an invasion, a manned invasion of the United States. So they've already been preparing for years now, and it turns out that... The corruption has gone so, gone so far, Dr. Deagle, that they even corrupted the, the Mexican president, the cartels, and everybody that wants some money. And they promised the Mexican government that they would get, hand over Texas and New Mexico and Arizona. Uh, California was not mentioned, but we know, we know for a fact that the Russians were here trying to negotiate the entire peninsula of Baja California to the Russians in order to let them or allow them to come in and do a full-scale communist invasion of the United States. So whatever it is, it's, it's real, and this is being confirmed by yeah. uh, elements uh, let, inside the CIA and the yeah, NSA, no, and they know, and they've known this for a long time now. What, what the globalists are doing by triggering this event in the Middle East is they've wargamed us all out, and they realize in 2022, 10 years from now, it, wargaming it out, America would lose. So the globalists have made a decision that they want to start the war sooner rather than later. Now, people need to understand when we look at both of these so-called presidential candidates for the selection, I call it, uh, and when you actually listen to them, they sound like they're very different. But we actually look at their policies and what they've done. They're so similar, it's crazy. It was both Obama and Romney. When we come back, we'll talk about this and about the, the very serious threats about what's... Uh, transpiring and what's likely to happen as we move toward a peace treaty probably in the next year after the election. Back in a moment. Welcome back, and uh, so Alexander, uh, if you were to summarize, what did you, what would you say to those out there? Because I know that listening to this report, the Neutral Medical Report, Clay and Iron Show, we have not only citizens that are trying to listen, not only America, but around the world. We also have military and people in intelligence that say one of the biggest problems I found having a Q level clearance and working for Space Command Strategic Defense Star Wars is discussing with a number of military people, ex NSA, CIA, etc. And by the way, you're never actually you always carrying a pager for the rest of your life is that one agency doesn't talk to another. Technology we do have doesn't get deployed in the field. Um, we allow things to happen like the transfer of technology, weapon systems, etc., or the invasion of our country. We have over almost 50 what's called trade zones, like the giant one in Idaho that's 50 square miles, approved by the governor of Idaho that literally is Chinese sovereign territory to do what they will uh, with that territory. 
Uh, what's going on is pure insanity. It's obviously a globalist plot to metastasize China into America's body politic, to destroy our factories and move them overseas. And we've had financial instruments like the insurance companies, the Glass-Steagall, and the, uh, and, the, and the various funding systems that literally encourage money to go internationally to build factories. For example, General Motors, which we've rescued, 70% of the GM cars in the world now are made overseas, primarily in China and Indonesia and other countries, where we actually rescued them with our money, and they're now being built, 70% of the vehicles are being built over there. Uh, this is all designed to globalize, and I think, uh, considering all these missiles, like the, the Russian missile destroyer, the, the boomer they call it, that was sitting in the Gulf of Mexico, this is designed to say to America, to signal, we're here, we can destroy you, Let's make a deal, which is financial, because ultimately it comes down to money and territory and land and access to food, because the Chinese are on the front edge of the largest famine in Chinese history. And they've had a long history of famines that have killed millions that are citizens over the centuries. This latest famine that's striking China, because of their massive population that are expanding Gobi and other deserts, climate change, etc., and now the incredible despoiling of agricultural land by giant industry in China that's been given over to the 80 million communists, they're in a world of hurt. And the Chinese will not, especially if they just decide to go to a Western meat, etc. diet, they will not be able to feed their own population at the current rate it's going in the next few years. So if they don't invade other countries, they're going to see a massive die-off of Chinese people. Exactly. What I see is exactly that. That China is growing to such an extent that it's going to need resources to keep expanding its uh, thriving uh, economic model. And that's well, its model is already collapsing. Model. It's down to 2.7% of exports compared to 22.47 last uh, August, year by year. And that means that uh, they generate 10 new employees for one job now in China, and they have warehouses where they store stuff because they can't shut off their industry or they'll have an internal revolution. People don't know what's really going on. Russia is basically a country where the young people are doped up to their eyeballs in Moscow and elsewhere that they're a single economy based on oil. And if you don't have oil, you have oil, so you have industry to make things. So Russia is what I call a very stupid economy that's not... Uh, uh, how can I say it, uh, organized into more advanced technology. The same with all these Arab countries, like Saudi Arabia and Qatar, etc. They're running out of oil. And America, basically, I know this, my oil engineer, uh, one of my patients was actually an oil engineer, said, all these abiotic oil pumpers in the back of ranchers' yards, you don't even need to drill new oil. You don't even need to talk about the oil shale oil or the Prudhoe Bay Liberty Rig or the oil in the Gulf of Mexico. There's enough oil just in the backyards already that have been drilled over the last century. We could completely be independent because all these oil wells refill because they're abiotic. That's the big dirty secret they don't want to tell people that we don't need anybody else's energy. And if, well, we if put they on told the people, if they told the people that oil re replenishes itself, you'd have one cent a gallon at the pumps. Okay. Well, well not only that, we wouldn't have we, water. Right. What would happen is our industry would all move back here. We would. Uh, we could also use more clean build burning uh, carburetion technologies. We would have. We have tons of natural gas. I mean, there should be natural gas everywhere. Um, I personally think that, you know, and they want, to, they want to close off all the other advanced technology for energy, energy from a vacuum, uh, fusion react reactors, which we've had for over 30 years. All of this is to manipulate the public, just like, uh, you know, they, why are the Japanese not uh, protesting over all of the death of all their children and radiation? Maybe they've been promised advanced life extension technology and that their children will be born in, in advanced bio labs with any genetic defects so their children will live for centuries because they'll be upgraded. I mean, who knows what they're thinking of? I, it just defies logic to me and decency that Japanese teachers and politicians would tell uh, them that these children should eat radioactive food because it's good to learn about how dangerous radiation is. Well, there's no real difference between Japan and China. I mean, the, the society is robotized. They're auto, uh, auto, automated societies. The, the people just don't even have a, any values, core values, in order to discern and say, no, we're against this. They're just killing the people blindly. Same thing, uh, that's what happens with empires, that uh, 
you know, mind control their societies into a certain belief state. Well, yeah, Same thing that's with North why Korea and Iran. Yeah. No, if you look at South Korea, there's a lot of Christians there. A lot of the Christians have come there. In fact, one of my neighbors is a uh, is a uh, Christian from uh, South Korea, and he's very smart. Runs a, a furniture factory there. These people are totally different. It's the it's when you add Christianity to people from anywhere, they it elevates them. It brings them out of Islam, out of communism, out of atheism, out of transhumanism, out of evolution into a state where human beings become valuable and literally preserving the earth itself becomes a top priority rather than just getting richer and more powerful temporarily. Well, they understand God's creation and God's creation is being defiled every day from the human DNA to uh, every single plant and cell and food and everything they're doing. They're just desecrating the earth on purpose to piss God off. That's the fact. And they just want prophecy to be fulfilled in order to bring the end of days with this 12 Mahdi scenario of bringing out the, the, the new Messiah of Islam and imposing their caliphate upon the world and destroying Israel in the process and nuking everybody. They're just insane. They're, they're on steroids and they're insane. They have to be stopped. And it's really well, sad because... <laughs> We're, we're going to bring on the program next week. Uh, Theodore Shubat will be back on it, Michael Velarde. We're also going to bring on Joel Chernoff talking about what's going on with Obama. Obama basically was not going to meet with uh, Netanyahu. Now, whether he disagrees or agrees with him, he should be meeting with the pre president of Israel. This is really uh, extremely dangerous to do this. We need to have integration of our military actions with Israel, no matter what it is, because if we don't, and they just do something, we're a target anyway. So the fact is, if Israel decides to do something preemptively, we're going to get hit, whether we want to get involved or not. Well, the Israeli lobby in the United States, the senators announced on Fox News, you know, this weekend, we will attack Iran if Obama wants it or not. We will defend Israel. Well, okay, well, first off, I got a little twist on that. First off, you have to analyze it rather than just emotionally. Number one, are these uh, centrifuges and material distributed in such a way that these false missile silos cannot be all wiped out? Number two, can you stop the reactors? Can you then put people on the ground like special forces to make sure you, you remove these weapons, just like the VX nerve gas and RDX in Syria, the advanced weapons moved by Saddam and the Russians, by the way. The Russians were the primary ones moving this because what we're dealing with here with Syria and Iran is a proxy war with Russia. That's it. I mean, we don't want to face that reality. We're actually in a proxy war with now the former Soviet Union, which I believe never went away. Uh, and also it's a collaboration with China. China got the, the lion's share of the oil refinery capacity out of Iraq. The China oil company came out of Gulf War II. Uh, you know, they're now the fifth largest oil refining company on the planet. Well, and They didn't exist before because China has no oil resources. I understand, but Iran right now is uh, threatening with a preemptive strike against Israel right now, and Israel has to respond accordingly. Oh, yeah. Then the way they need to respond, though, they, I think they need a combination of not just thinking that they're just going to bomb. They have to put special forces on the ground. And I think that uh, sooner rather than later makes more sense to me. Uh, I know I hear people say that they can't do that. Well, I don't want them bombing infrastructure or Tehran or other cities, but I think it's very important that we neutralize the idea that, and some people get very ups upset with this. They think, well, don't you think that all religions have something positive to contribute? Not. Uh, the fact is the only religion that actually sets man back in its proper position with God is Christianity. And Islam is the most dangerous of all religions. You, you know, if you go to an airport, are you going to have a Buddhist or a Hindu say they're going to blow themselves up in a plane and kill you or go to a train station? No. Well, the uh, Ayatollah said today that Jesus is an illegitimate child, so... Boy, that was today, right? Yeah, today. Not good. Um, I think that uh, we have a very weak president in Obama, and... Uh, if we don't have some strengths of operations uh, going through this mi minefield where Russian submarines are in the Gulf of Mexico and the Mexicans are collaborating with the Chinese and Russians and Venezuela, things are going to get very nasty in the future if we don't face the fact that we have the power now to take care of the situation. If we let it go too far, we're going to be captured and crushed.